the two things that matter in communication. I'm originally from Lima, Peru. And I'm a foodie. I like good restaurants. So let me tell you this story. So I was in Vegas doing research. Doing research. <laughs> and I went to this high-end restaurant that had an open kitchen concept. You know, kind of the, the tables were kind of in a U shape in the kitchen in the middle. I was there two and a half hours. Not a word was said in two and a half hours. And I finally said to the uh, waiter, I, can I talk to the sous chef or somebody? I'm a professor, I study this stuff. So the sous chef came. And I said, hey, I've been here two and a half hours. Not a word. It's the quietest kitchen I've ever seen. He said, sure. We know our role. We know the menu. We know how to pass the plate. We're, that's just the words he said. We're an orchestra. We know where everything goes. And so what I want to tell you is, in, co in uh, communication, more communication is not necessarily better. Better communication is better. And so this belief that there's out there that teamwork is about communication, 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 and more the, the better. Wrong. The best teams are quiet. The best teams I've seen in OR, quiet. The second thing that matters in communication is the sharing of unique information. Lots of meta-analysis in there. So teams get bogged down talking about the same thing over and over and over. When somebody will say, hey, time out. Does somebody have information or a detail here that we haven't talked about? And so the sharing of unique information is what leads to better uh, performance. Here's a meta-analysis that just came out that showed that quality is better over frequency. Face-to-face -face is better than virtual. So it's not about how often you talk. It's about the, the, the pattern of communication and the quality or in the timeliness or information you, you, you pass. So why more is not necessarily better? So we were doing a number of studies uh, in the Navy. And this is now, again, a long time ago. And we were trying to see the effects of stress. I told you that we had this big money to study stress, the team decision making and the stress. And we were cranking up workload in this command and control team, these are experts. And we were finding that under tremendous workload, stress, some teams were maintaining performance without talking to each other. And we couldn't figure out what the hell is going on here. This tremendous stress that should be, you know, uh, performance will go down. And we finally realized, of course, they had a shared mental model of the task and their teammates. And under stress, they were passing information to each other without somebody requesting it. That is what was going on in the kitchen. That's what I've seen in OR when the scalpel is ready before it's requested. That's what you see in basketball. That's what you see tonight uh, in the championship, I hope. That blind pass. What is the no look uh, blind pass in basketball? is when two people see how the defense is positioned, how much time they have left on the clock, and they execute a task without saying, hey, there goes the ball. They have a shared mental model. This is team cognition. This is what you want your teams to, to have. This is trainable, you can develop it, and so forth. 